They say desperate times call for desperate measures, and as the year 1943 ticked into 1944, times were looking very desperate for Japan. So desperate, in fact, the Japanese High Command decided to create a secret weapon that involved putting humans in torpedoes and launching them at enemy ships. These torpedoes would be called Chitin, and they would be an abysmal failure that resulted in far more damage being inflicted to Japanese forces and minimal damage being inflicted to U.S. forces. As World War II progressed, and the situation was looking increasingly dire for Japan, its military was looking for a solution that would turn the tide of war back into Japan's favor, or at the very least prevent the Japanese mainland from being invaded. This led to the creation of special attack units, which were specialized units of the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy that would primarily carry out suicide missions. These included the famed kamikaze pilots and the topic of this video, the Kaiten. Kaiten translates to the Heaven Shaker. Research on this weapon began in 1944 with the first prototype being completed by July 25th of the same year. The majority of Chitin types were based on the Type 93 Long Lance Torpedo with the Type 10 being the only Chitin to be based on the Type 92 Torpedo. In total, there were six types of Chitin designed, which were Types 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 10, but only the Type 1 would see operational use. The Type 1 was based so heavily on the Type 93 Torpedo that it was essentially a stretched and modified Type 93 that had room for a pilot and allowed for gyroscope and pilot controls. The explosive charge was also increased with the Type 93's initial 1,080 pounds of explosives being increased to 3,420 pounds for the Type 1 Chitin. Its length was 48 feet 5 inches with a diameter of 3 feet 3 inches, so it was incredibly cramped. It had a maximum range of 42 nautical miles, a max speed of 30 knots, and an operating depth of 260 feet. It was detonated via a contact or manual electric fuse. Early designs allowed for the pilot to escape after final acceleration towards the target, but this provision was later dropped and once inside the pilot was unable to unlock the hatches and he was to self-destruct if an attack failed. Chitons were designed to be launched from the deck of a submarine as well as surface ships such as destroyers and cruisers and they were also intended to be launched from coastal installations as a coastal defense weapon. Operationally though, Chitons were only ever deployed from submarines. Specially equipped submarines could carry anywhere from two to six Chiton depending on the type of submarine. The Chiton would be carried on the deck of the host submarine and an access tube would connect the submarine to the bottom of the Chiton so the Chiton pilots could enter the craft while the host submarine remained submerged. Once a suitable target was located by the host submarine, the Chiton would be prepped for launch and the pilot would enter his torpedo coffin where he would be given his final mission briefing. After this, the Chiton would separate from the host submarine and head towards the target. Once within attack range, the Chiton would surface and the pilot would check his range and bearing via periscope and make any necessary final adjustments. He would then submerge, arm the warhead, and begin his attack run. If he missed, he could try again or he could self-destruct if a second attack wasn't possible or it also failed. All the Chiton pilots were men younger than 30 with the youngest being 17. Basic training for Chiton pilots began with the prospective pilots sailing fast surface boats by periscope and instrument readings only. After satisfactorily completing this skill, the trainee would begin training in Chitons with dummy warheads. Training started with basic circular runs to and from a fixed landmark at a reduced speed. Training would get more challenging and hazardous with runs around rocks and through channels in deeper water. This type of training would require the trainee to repeatedly surface to check the periscope and to take into account the reduction in weight of the chitin as oxygen was used up. If a trainee was able to master this portion of the training, they were then ready to train against target ships. This was done in open water at full attack speed in either the dark or in twilight, with the final phase of training involving the Chitin launching from a submarine before making an attack on the target ship. Since this training involved ramming the target ship at attack speed, it was inherently dangerous with 15 pilots being killed and others were seriously injured. The argument for Chitin suggested they would be capable of sinking an American capital ship for the price of one Chitin and its pilot. To the Japanese High Command, this was an entirely acceptable sacrifice of one person in order to sink something as large as a battleship or aircraft carrier. This would turn out to be wildly optimistic and would never come close to being achieved. The largest ship sunk was an auxiliary oiler, and the largest combat ship sunk was a destroyer escort, which, as their name suggests, are the small ships that escort destroyers.
Submarines carrying Chitin would be sent out on 10 deployments, and it's on these deployments the utter failure of the Chitin program would be on full display. Out of the special attack units, Chitin came in second only to the Kamikaze, but they don't come close to the success of the Kamikaze pilots. Chitons were hastily manufactured and hastily put into service before some of their design flaws could be worked out. Water would leak into the Chitons, and if it made its way into the engine, it could cause the Chitin to explode prematurely. However, the largest design flaw would prove to be the most deadly to the host submarines. Chitons couldn't go deep, therefore neither could their host submarines as long as they had chitin attached to them. This resulted in the host submarine having a terrible survival rate with eight being sunk taking with them their crews, any remaining chitin pilots still on board, and any maintenance and support personnel. The first Chitin deployment involved three Chitin carrying submarines that had a total of 12 Chitin. The submarine I-37 would target an anchorage near Palau. Submarines I-47 and I-36 would target ships in Ulithi Atoll. Here they would make their first successful attack on the USS Mississinawa anchored at Ulithi on 20 November 1944. The USS Mississinawa was an oiler and her purpose was to refuel ships at sea. When the Chitin attacked, Mississinawa was fat with 404,000 gallons of aviation fuel, 9,000 barrels of diesel fuel, and 90,000 barrels of fuel oil. So when she blew, she blew big. So big, in fact, that it was reported to the Japanese High Command that three aircraft carriers and two battleships had been sunk. This made the initial deployment of Chitin seem like a huge, heaven-shaking success, and more Chitin deployments were ordered. The reality was much different. Indeed, the fleet oiler USS Mississinawa was sunk by a chitin, taking with her all her precious fuel resources and 63 of her crew, but the Japanese lost one submarine and her crew of 117 men. I-37 was sighted by two destroyers around the same time the Mississinawa was attacked, and they attacked I-37 with hedgehogs, sinking her. I-47 managed to launch all four of her chitin, but one was rammed and sunk by a destroyer, a second ran aground on the reef, and a third was likely sunk by depth charges. Only one made contact with the ship, which was the Mississinawa. I-36 had two chitin become stuck on its deck and wouldn't launch, a third developed a heavy leak in the pilot's compartment, meaning it would probably sink if launched, and the fourth was launched but never heard from again. So the final tally of the first Chitin Patrol was one U.S. fleet oiler sunk with a loss of 63 crew compared to Japan's loss of one submarine, 117 crew, and 9 to 12 Chitin. A far cry from the one Chitin, one capital ship the Japanese High Command had desired. The second deployment resulted in two U.S. ships damaged and one U.S. infantry landing craft sunk with a loss of three lives at a cost of one Japanese submarine with her 122 crew and about 20 Chitin lost. The third deployment resulted in two Japanese submarines lost, along with their combined crew number of 169 officers and men, along with their chitons and their pilots. No U.S. ships were reported to have been damaged. The fourth deployment was uneventful. The fifth deployment resulted in one Japanese submarine damaged and two Japanese submarines sunk with a combined crew loss of 251. No U.S. ships were reported damaged. The sixth deployment resulted in the loss of at least two Chitin and their pilots with no loss or damage to U.S. ships. The seventh deployment resulted in one Japanese submarine damaged and the loss of two Chitin and their pilots with no loss or damage to U.S. ships. The eighth deployment resulted in one Japanese submarine damaged with it never being used again for the remainder of the war, two Japanese submarines sunk with a combined crew loss of 187. The USS Endemayan, a landing craft repair ship, was damaged in a conventional torpedo attack since the Chitin either failed to hit targets, were sunk by gunfire, or were faulty at launch. Japanese submarine I-363 was unable to launch her Chitin this deployment because she was unable to get close enough to the target to use them on one occasion and the weather was too rough to launch Chitin on another occasion. The ninth and final combat deployment of Chitons resulted in what could be argued as the most successful Chitin attack at least in terms of life loss. The Buckley-class destroyer escort USS Underhill was escorting cargo ships and troop ships when she was attacked by Chitin from I-53. She rammed one but was struck by a second and both Chitin detonated their weapons which caused the Underhill's boilers to detonate, tearing the ship in half, killing 112 of her crew. More than a week after the attack on the Underhill, I-53 would launch two Chitin at a pursuing destroyer and manage to damage it. I-58 would launch two chitin at a tanker and a destroyer. The destroyer sunk one chitin with gunfire and rammed another which would slightly damage the destroyer. 
A day after this attack, the I-58 would sight the USS Indianapolis and sink her, resulting in the worst loss of life aboard a U.S. ship while out at sea during World War II, and also result in the largest shark attack in recorded history on her survivors. However, I-58 used conventional torpedoes to sink the Indy, so this can't be counted as a Khitan success. No further ships were reported damaged by Khitan. The 10th deployment was intended to attack Soviet convoys in the Sea of Japan, but Japan surrendered and the mission was canceled before the Khitan carrying submarine saw any action. The final results of all the Khitan deployments were 187 U.S. officers and men lost, along with one oiler sunk, one landing craft sunk, and one destroyer escort sunk, and a handful of other ships damaged, with the Japanese losses in comparison being 106 Khitan pilots lost, Eight submarines sunk along with their crews of 846 officers and men and 156 maintenance and support personnel killed. This is in stark contrast to the kamikaze attacks which killed or wounded almost 10,000 sailors and sunk between 34 and 57 ships and damaged hundreds of others at a loss of 3,800 kamikaze pilots. That about sums it up for the short and unsuccessful history of the human torpedo known as the Heaven Shaker. Captured chitons would be studied by the U.S. after the war, but manned suicide torpedoes would never be used again in a conventional war. There are still surviving chitons on display at various museums around the world, including one located at the Bofin Museum in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii.